enjoy the next presentation. It's the head of Simulation Center, Dr. Matthias Oppelt. Yeah, warm welcome from my side um, on this year's SPS IPC drives. Um, let me take you on a little journey, a journal journey throughout the life cycle of the complete um, process plant. And that journey should not only focus on how it will be constructed, it should really focus on how models, how simulation, how optimization can help us to make engineering, design, operations of a plant even more efficient and productive um, as today. So the basis, if we talk about simulation or optimization, typically it, it requires some kind of a model. A model. A model would describe in some mathematical terms what actually the real physical behavior would look like. So at the end, that would end up in some kind of differential equations and so on. And some people already say, OK, what the heck is that? That's so complex already. Um, how can we make use um, of that technology, which requires a certain set of complexity in our daily operations? And this is how we help you. So we think there's a huge potential in using models for simulation, for optimization, and so on and so forth throughout the whole life cycle of a process plant um, and beyond that. So uh, why design, engineering, operations, and to make it as easy as possible for you to use it in your day-to-day -day operations. So all the things with building the model and um, de deriving the equations and all that kind of stuff, we take care of it. We solve that complexity. We take care of that complexity. We reduce it. We make it for you as e easy as possible to use it in your day-to-day -day operations. To really focus on what you want to achieve and to get the job done. How does it look in particular if we look at the life cycle of a process plant? We see, OK, at the beginning, I have to design a design a process, I have to design the equipment, um, I have to size the equipment, I have to want to come up with the best process design as possible from the very beginning. Then I want to select the proper control scheme, the control design, I have to want to validate it. Then I select my automation system, this is also a big part here on the sphere, um, which you can select then. And then I operate the plant. I operate it on a day-to-day -day basis and I want to operate it as efficient as possible. And guess what? Models and model-based technology can, be, uh, can provide a big benefit to you across the whole life cycle. If we look at our portfolio, what we are offering, um, and which you can also see here at the fair, it's typically, it starts from a very beginning plant design, which we can do for process plants with Comos, for example. You have your plant automation with Semantic PCS7. You're building up your virtual plant, um, which is used for virtual commissioning for operator training with, uh, with Simit. And then, I always have to build certain models, certain digital twins, and this requires certain know-how about the process. What is actually being, being modeled, um, being driven by an automation system at the end. And having this deep know-how about the process can add significant value. But I do need that process know-how captured in models, and I need it somewhere from. And the question is, where does it come from? And where does it come from to make it quite easily? And we also have something to offer because we have a, co a strategic collaboration with PSE, a UK-based company with their portfolio based on GPROMs, which is really dedicated for process industries and for process modeling, including all the reaction kinetics and all the needy greedy details which I want to model in the process. So we can use that. And we can combine the benefits that these tools are used heavily in design, in designing the process, 
And what we want to do is to say, okay, if I have that know-how encapsulated in that models, I want to use it in the operations phase. And how does that look like? I will, I will show you in a second. And we will start just briefly in the design and engineering phase and how I get my optimal design from the very beginning. And here the GPROMS comes into play um, with a classical flow sheeting environment where we really come up with the best process design from a very early um, design stage to really capture the know-how about the process and create significant value out of it. So you will analyze your sensitivities of certain parameters, and at the end, you will have a process design which serves your needs best. And with that decision to come up and build that plant, you go into the engineering phase. You go into the commissioning phase, you go into the operations phase, and you need to train your operators. So you will build your automation system, you will need to verify your automation system, and this is where SIMIT comes into the play. And with SIMIT, you're building up the virtual plant. You use it to connect to the real, real automation uh, system with a real PLC, for example. Um, so SIMIT is then really calculating in real time what the, um, what the control system is, um, is driving. The next level of virtualization in this regard is also that you virtualize your controller. You can use virtual controllers, which we're offering for our controller families. You can also you make use of open interfaces, which we are having, like OPC UA, to connect to any kind of other control system which you have in your real plant, which you want to connect to your virtual plant, imitated in SIMIT. And you can also make use of co-simulations. So you can make use of the models already created in design, like the GPROMS model for a process plant, or you use it like a mechatronics concept designer model for, for a machine, 3D machine concept, which you can use the same way. And SIMIT is, to this regard, industry agnostic. So you can really use it to all kinds of automation system with all kinds of co-simulation systems. And if we look at integrated um, engineering and integrated operations, so where does the information come from to generate the SIMIT model? And as I mentioned at the beginning, we want to take down the complexity to use that model-based technology. And therefore, you can use design information from COMOS, you can use information from the automation system to really generate a lot of your SIMIT model automatically. And there's also a new version which we are showing here the first time on the SPS IPC Drives 2018, where we have some enhancements to the core SIMIT portfolio, which is on the one hand side the SIMIT unit, which connects the virtual plant with the real controller, which is what got enhanced with some certain um, comp compatibility um, functionalities. We enhance the virtual controller functionalities, also for string re redundancy. We enhance the SIMIT simulation platform itself with a very scalable and flexible licensing concept. And further, we have domain-specific libraries which we also con um, consistently enhance and um, develop further. And with that said, now in the phase of uh, or in the life cycle of an operating pl uh, operator or process plant, we are now entering the operations phase. So engineering is done, operators are able to be trained based on a SIMIT um, operator training system, and now we are going into the real operations of a process. And here we see a real plant, what you see, real plant, equipment, real equipment, real automation system, real controls um, centers. On the right-hand side, you just see the virtual plant once again. And how to use model-based technology in the operations, we add another layer, which we call monitoring and optimization layer. And in that layer, we make reuse of the master process model, which we use in design and in engineering. We, we implement that into the operations. And this process model then gets linked to the real operation, to the real process. And it's being getting information and getting values from the real plant operations 
and the model can be tuned to as best as possible represent the original and the S is plant state. <clears throat> and with that, we can make use out of that model to predict certain internal states of the process of the plant, which cannot be measured, for example, in reality. So we can use it for soft sensing, and we can then increase the transparency about the internal states of the process to the operator. So the operator can make, on a day-to-day -day operations basis, make use of that internal know-how, how the current state is. And the model, it's quite nice, because that model is not bound to real time and physical constraints. So we can also make use and say, OK, just predict how much longer can I operate the plant in that certain operating scenario. For example, with some effects like um, fouling effects or some coking effects in the cracker, when do I have to maybe shut down for maintenance purposes? So the model is able to predict that. And it's not only able to predict that, it can also see what would be an even better way of operating my plant to extend the runtime, to extend, at the end, the output, the throughput of my operations. And it could also include um, what, we ha what comes maybe from the market, new demands, new orders. Um, and this is very easy. So it's, you have so many variables to consider in making decisions. So the model can take care of it, can do it for you. Also, model-based control systems, like model, uh, model predictive control, can be easily made use um, out of that um, highly um, specific and detailed process model which we are using and running in parallel, all the way to nonlinear uh, model predictive control. And this is really the new layer, the new layer modeling, uh, monitoring and optimization, which we introduced newly by that combination that you now can make use of high complex, very detailed, nonlinear um, dynamic models at runtime to optimize your operations of your plant on a day-to-day -day basis. And with that said, the journey ends here and was a quick journey throughout the very big, very far um, life cycle of a process plant from using it really from the design engineering to the operations. And the clue is that it's usable by experts and it's usable by non-experts. And at the end, it all comes down to increase your profitability, or profitability in engineering and in operations. And if you want to learn more about that, please come here, visit us, just turn around, go to the next wall where it's big letters uh, saying virtual commissioning, and there you find it, um, and you can see it live, and um, we can discuss it further. Thank you very much, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, dear Matthias. Big hand of applause you. to you. Uh, really impressive what we can do with simulation and um, how we can look into the future, predict the future, and prepare for what might happen. What was the most interesting case you have been working on simulation? What do you remember? Oh, there are so many <laughs> interesting cases uh, with simulation. That's a typical marketing answer, ladies and gentlemen. And if you want to get the details of all these interesting cases... See me over there. Exactly. Perfect. All right. With that said, I'm heading over to the next topics here on stage. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.